if scientists knew everything, there would be no mysteries in life. We'd know exactly what was going on in the heart of a black hole. We'd know why life exists and how our universe began. Those are big mysteries. But many of the mysteries that scientists are yet to fully solve are more down to earth than that. In fact, some of them were left behind by our ancient ancestors, and others were created by nature itself. First up on our list of mysteries today are the Erdstahl tunnels in Europe. There are thousands of them, running on for miles beneath the surface of Germany, Austria, France, the United Kingdom, and several other countries. The tunnels are narrow and smooth, and tend to align with each other either horizontally or vertically. Some of them even have structures carved into the walls that look a little like benches. Each tunnel has only one point of exit and entry, generally hidden in the ruins of ancient settlements, and so there would have been no light and very little air inside them. We've never been able to explain who made the tunnels or why. None of them contains any archaeological signifiers, so it's difficult for us even to say when they were made. Most historians think that they date back to the 12th century at least, but it's odd that there's no record of their construction in any known historical record. Austrian folklore says that they were built by goblins, and while we can probably rule that out, it's not like we have any better ideas. Summer is hot, winter is cold. That's a basic fact of life. So what's the deal with this bizarre ice cave that only produces ice during the warmest months of summer? It's called the Coderspot Ice Cave, and you'll find it in Potter County, Pennsylvania, USA. It's a small natural cavern, just 8 feet wide and 10 feet long. Ice builds up inside it to such an extent that at its thickest, it generates icicles 3 feet thick and 25 feet long. Those icicles begin to form in spring, and as the temperature outside rises, the temperature inside the ice cave drops. When winter arrives in Pennsylvania and snow covers the ground, the ice inside the cave melts away to nothing. The best theory offered by science is that cold air slips through cracks in the rock and penetrates inside the chamber, coming into contact with groundwater and freezing it. As the groundwater is only there during summer, the effects only last as long as the summer months do. It sounds like a convincing theory, but it's yet to be proven. What is a Nazi nuclear cube? We're glad you asked! Fortunately, the Nazis didn't develop the capability for nuclear weapons during the Second World War, but it wasn't for lack of trying. The legacy of their efforts lives on in these strange nuclear cubes. The cubes were part of a structure called a B-8 reactor, created by Nazi scientist Werner Heisenberg, who was captured by the Allies as the war approached its end in 1945. Heisenberg is the father of quantum mechanics. His reactor core is today on display at the Adam Keller Museum in Heigerloch. It's made of 664 cubes of uranium, tied together with cords placed inside a graphite shell. There aren't enough of them to make the reactor work, but hundreds more of the cubes are known to exist on the black market even today. It's thought that the only reason the Nazis didn't succeed with their experiment is that they miscalculated how much heavy water would be required. Had that miscalculation not been made, the outcome of the war might well have been very different. There's an ancient structure in Telangana, India, called Warangal Fort. The history of the fort is mysterious, and at the center of that mystery is the lingam at the heart of the structure. Time has taken its toll on the rest of Warungal Fort, which is mostly ruined, but the black basalt cylinder of the lingam is so pristine that it still looks like its creators finished their work only yesterday. That alone is a puzzle, but the bigger puzzle is how it was carved. It's perfectly round and smooth, without any scratches, chips, or any other tool marks anywhere on its surface. If we didn't know any better, we'd say it must have been carved using laser technology. Making something so perfectly formed out of any kind of stone would have been difficult using only the hand tools that were available several centuries ago. But the Indians chose a hard volcanic rock that's still considered to be difficult to work with today. Perhaps the symbol on the lingam might explain why and how it was made. 
but nobody's ever been able to make any sense of the symbol either. There's a tomb in Brompton Cemetery, London, England, that's become a local legend. The locals say that the tomb contains the secret of time travel. This is the tomb of Hannah Courtois and her two daughters. She was born in 1784 and married a rich man, inheriting his assets when he passed away in 1827. After his death, she became fascinated with ancient Egypt and began a relationship with an Egyptologist named Joseph Bonomi. That fascination led to her requesting that her tomb be decorated with hieroglyphics, Egyptian symbols, and a small pyramid when she passed away in 1849. The tomb also features a door sealed with a lock and key. When Benoni passed away a few years later, his simple tombstone was marked with an Egyptian symbol that points towards Hannah's tomb. One of Bonomi's friends, Samuel Alfred Warner, claimed to have created a time machine and hidden it in a cemetery for safekeeping. Bonomi himself, who was just as eccentric as his friend, claimed to have created a teleportation chamber based on secret Egyptian technology. Either the time machine or the teleportation device is said to be hidden behind the door of Hannah's tomb. But the key was mysteriously lost long ago, and the door has never been opened. When an object fell from the sky and crashed through the roof of Tommy Wolseley's home in Bergen, Kentucky, USA in October 2019, he was initially told it had come from a plane. It seemed like an unlikely but entirely explainable accident. A few days later, though, the Federal Aviation Administration changed their mind and said it wasn't part of an aircraft. The Fort Campbell military base has taken a look at the object and says that it's nothing to do with the military either. The National Guard, too, has denied responsibility. That leaves Tommy without an explanation for what damaged his property. The object has lettering and numbering on its side that somebody should recognize, but nobody's ever come forward to accept the blame. It's a canister of some description, two inches in diameter and just under a foot long. Tommy describes it as surprisingly heavy for its size. With most other explanations ruled out, the most likely one left on the table is that it fell from a satellite, or it's a piece of debris from a space launch. But if that were the case, it should be easy to identify it. The mystery persists. We're back to the mythology-rich land of the United Kingdom now to check out Maggie Wall's memorial in Dunning, Scotland. Local people say that Maggie Wall was burnt at the stake by witch hunters, but official records say that Maggie Wall never existed. That rather begs the question of who the memorial was really built for. There's no way to misinterpret the lettering on the stones. It says, Maggie Wall burnt here as a witch in 1657. More than 3,800 people were tried as witches in Scotland between the 16th and 18th centuries, with court records available for all of them. Maggie Wall's name doesn't appear anywhere in those records, and nor is there any record of the monument prior to 1866. Curiously though, the nearby forest was first listed as Maggie Wall's Wood in 1829. One theory is that the monument was erected as a memorial to all the women who were unjustly burned as witches. But if that were the case, there should be some record of its construction and purpose. The memorial is regularly maintained to this day, with wreaths laid at its foot and coins pressed into the cracks between the stones. The trees that line the banks of the canal that runs through Neath, Wales, aren't like the trees anywhere else in the country. They've been delicately carved with symbols and human faces that make them look like totem poles, but nobody knows who's responsible for the artwork or when they started their project. Based on the number of carvings and their quality, each piece is likely to have taken several hours. Factor in the number of trees that have been carved, and the carvings must have taken months, if not years. Despite that, nobody has ever seen the artist at work, and nobody has ever claimed credit for the art. Designing totem poles isn't a skill or pastime that's native to the UK. They're far more often found in the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. The person responsible for the carvings may be from that part of the world, or might simply have been inspired by totem poles they've seen elsewhere. 
but without knowing who they are, it's impossible to know their motivations. There have been no new carvings added for several years, so just as mysteriously as their work started, it appears to have finished the same way. You've heard of a crop circle, but have you ever heard of a flock circle? If not, you're about to. Sheep are simple creatures, and herding them isn't easy. That's why farmers use dogs to do the work. The thought of sheep communicating with each other and agreeing to line up in a specific formation is laughable. And yet that's precisely what they appear to have done in the village of Rottingdean, East Sussex, England in April 2021. The sheep formation was so large that Christopher Hogg, the cyclist who saw the phenomenon and took pictures of it, was able to spot it from half a mile away. To his amazement, the animals had arranged themselves in perfectly structured concentric circles. To make matters even weirder, they were totally still and totally silent. He had to get closer to verify they were real sheep as opposed to models. The best theory anyone has is that the sheep created this shape by chance as they followed a livestock feeding device called a sheep snacker to get their food. But the odds against that are long. Maybe sheep aren't quite as mindless as we've long imagined them to be. More than 20 ring forts were created on Sweden's Åland Island in ancient times. All but one of them were occupied as soon as they were created and continued to be occupied for a long time. In some cases, people lived within the ring forts for centuries. The one exception to that room is Ismantorp Fortress. Work on the fortress was finished somewhere close to the beginning of the second century, but there's no archaeological evidence to suggest anyone ever settled here permanently. Instead, there are scattered signs of occasional use between then and the middle of the seventh century. The lack of use is made all the stranger by the fact that this is the biggest ring fort on the island. It contains 95 houses arranged in 12 blocks, placed around an open communal area at the center and surrounded by a limestone wall, containing nine gates for entry and exit. Aside from being the biggest fort on Oland Island, most archaeologists agree that it's also likely to be the oldest. Why build 95 houses only for nobody to live in them? Why choose, instead, to live in smaller ring forts built after this one? We may never know. The Raggedy Ann doll, known as Annabelle, is one of the most famous in the world. It's even been the subject of internationally successful horror movies. Millions of people know that the doll, which is in the private museum of paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, is supposed to be cursed and haunted. Where do the stories come from, though? And is there any truth to them? The story told by the Warrens is that the doll belonged to a student nurse called Donna in 1970. The doll was brand new at the time. Donna and her roommate Angie would allegedly often come home to find that the doll had moved, including occasions where it passed through locked doors. It would also allegedly write messages on parchment paper in childlike handwriting, which was strange because there wasn't any parchment paper in the house. It was only when drops of blood mysteriously appeared on Annabelle one day that Donna reached out to the Warrens for help. After the doll apparently attacked Angie's boyfriend, the Warrens confiscated it and locked it away in a glass case. Even they were afraid of it. That doesn't make the stories true, but as the old saying goes, there's no smoke without fire. Everywhere the Romans went in Europe, they left magnificent structures behind. Some of those structures are easier to understand and explain than others. Centum Celis, the Roman tower in Belmonte, Portugal, belongs to the hard-to-explain category. The ruined structure is approximately 2,000 years old. It's said to be all that remains of a villa that once belonged to a rich tradesman named Lucio Cecilio, but that isn't the only theory about its origins. The name Centum Celas loosely translates into English as prison with 100 cells. That may have been its true purpose. Some say that Saint Cornelio himself was imprisoned here. However, the idea of it being either a villa or a prison is somewhat discredited by the fact that Centum Celas has no roof and no floors. That's not because it's a ruin. No floors were ever built, and nor was there ever a roof. 
Extensive archaeological digs were carried out here in the 1960s, and then again in the 1990s using better technology, but the experts were unable to find any answers. Perhaps it's just an impressive-looking folly.